Good morning and welcome to another Walking with Jesus Through the Word. One chapter per day, and we say one chapter per day, except when we come to the Psalms, we typically do more than one because they're short. We're doing Psalms 8 and 9 today. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel from Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. Good to be with you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. Speak to us through these psalms today. Write them on our hearts. May they become our songs and our prayers as we seek to glorify you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Psalms 8 and 9. Psalm 8 first is to the choir master, according to the Gittith, a psalm of David. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants, you have established strength because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. That is Psalm 8, one of the most famous and well-known psalms in the Bible. Uh, I think often of the Michael W. Smith praise song uh, from my younger days of, uh, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. This opening and closing refrain, O Lord, our Lord, it may seem a bit repetitive in our English translation, but you'll notice a difference if you look closely. The first Lord is in all caps, and the second Lord is not. So when you see Lord in all caps, it's Yahweh. It's the name of the Lord. Yahweh, I am, the I am who I am. And it emphasizes God's eternity, God's self-sufficiency, and God's unchangingness. I am who I have been and always will be. I am and I was and I am always going to be who I am. All that's tied up in the name of the Lord, Yahweh. That's his covenant name for his people. So God keeps his covenant with us. He is, O Lord, our Lord. And this word, Adonai, means master, ruler. The one who is eternally self-sufficient and unchanging. The one who is faithfulness itself, because he is sufficient in himself and never fails and never fades, is our Lord, our master, our king, our ruler. And his majesty... The glory of his reign and rule is seen in all the earth. His glory is above the heavens, and yet it's out of the mouths of babies and infants that he establishes strength or praise, is another way to translate that word, because of your foes to still the enemy and the avenger. We are but mere babies and infants, and yet God has given us strength and God has called us to praise him because the enemy, the avenger, must be silenced. And he's silenced by the work of God in the hearts and lives of his people who would be frail and helpless without him, but through him are strong and victorious. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you've set in place, what is man that you're mindful of him? You ever think that late at night, you go out and you look at the stars in the sky? If you've ever been to a place like in the desert or maybe out on the ocean or up in the mountains where you can really see on a cloudless night just a bunch of stars, just uncountable numbers of stars in the sky and that Milky Way band going across the sky. And it makes you feel so small and so helpless. And yet God in all of his creation is mindful of us and cares for us. He's made us a little lower than the heavenly beings. Then the gods is the original Hebrew here, the Elohim. You can even say a little lower than God himself. We're made in the image of God, to be under God, and yet overall creation, crowned with glory and honor as the only ones in creation who are made in the image of God and given dominion over the works of his hands, with all things being put under our feet. 
Now, Hebrews picks up Psalm 8 and says that right now we don't see human beings uh, crowned with glory and honor. We don't see human beings exercising dominion over the works of God's hands. We see human beings suffering illness and sickness and death and attacks by wild animals and, and, and struggling. But who do we see? We see Jesus, who was made for a little while lower than the heavenly beings, who is now crowned with glory and honor. So Hebrews would tell us to look to Christ as the fulfillment of Psalm 8, and then hope in the future glory that will come when this will be true of us as it is true of Christ, and will be exalted to his right hand. And so we can praise him, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Psalm 9 is written to the choir master, according to Muth Laban, which is probably the tune that it was set to. It's a psalm of David. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all your wondrous deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. When my enemies turn back, they stumble and perish before your presence. For you have maintained my just cause. You have sat on the throne giving righteous judgment. You have rebuked the nations. You have made the wicked perish. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. The enemy came to an end in everlasting ruins. Their cities you rooted out. The very memory of them has perished. But the Lord sits enthroned forever. He has established his throne for justice. And he judges the world with righteousness. He judges the peoples with uprightness. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you, for you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who sits enthroned in Zion. Tell among the peoples his deeds. For he who avenges blood is mindful of them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Be gracious to me, O Lord. See my affliction from those who hate me. O oh, you who lift me up from the gates of death, that I may recount all your praises, that in the gates of the daughter of Zion I may rejoice in your salvation. The nations have sunk in the pit they have made. In the net that they hid, their own foot has been caught. The Lord has made himself known. He has executed judgment. The wicked are snared. In the work of their own hands, Hegeon Selah. The wicked shall return to God, all the nations that forget God, for the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail, let the nations be judged before you. Put them in fear, O Lord, let the nations know that they are but men, Selah. That is Psalm 9. And all the Psalms are ultimately about Christ. Uh, we see many of them quoted in the New Testament and applied to Christ, as Hebrews does with Psalm 8. But they are all, in one way or another, about Christ. Uh, some have called the Psalms the prayer book of Christ. That these are the, the prayers that were on the heart and the lips of Jesus during his earthly incarnation. We know that from the cross, Jesus prayed Psalm 22, My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Also, I thirst uh, comes from the Psalms. And so we know that uh, he, he had the Psalms in his heart. He had the Psalms on his lips. And uh, they speak to us of Christ. And in this case, this is a Psalm that speaks of the nations, particularly the nations of Rome and Israel, that surrounded Christ and, and persecuted him unto death. But God lifted him up from the grave and has made him Lord over all of the nations. So as we read through this, we should see Christ in it, uh, giving thanks to the Lord, because God is the one who has maintained the just cause of Christ, and uh, who sat on the throne giving righteous judgment to Christ by raising him from the dead, and by exalting him to be over all. Um, the Lord sits enthroned forever. He's established his throne for justice. He judges the world with righteousness. He judges the people with uprightness. 
We even see um, in verse 13, See my affliction from those who hate me, O you who lift me up from the gates of death, that I may recount all your praises. This is, this is Jesus. Uh, the, those who hated him, uh, the Romans and the Jewish religious leaders, they hated him, they put him to death, but God the Father lifted him up from the gates of death. And then the nation sunk in the pit that they made. Uh, the Jewish nation suffered the judgment of God in AD 70 because they had rejected Christ as their Lord and had put him to death. And then the very Roman Empire itself would fall under God's judgment. All those who oppose God do fall under his judgment. But the needy and the poor and the afflicted can rejoice in hope in him just as Jesus was needy and poor and afflicted and God heard him and was gracious to him. So all of those who put their hope in the Lord, though in this life they are needy and poor and afflicted, yet we shall praise God forever because he who lifted Christ from the dead will lift us from the dead with him on that great and glorious day when he comes again. Amen. What a wonderful day to look forward to. Father, thank you for the day of resurrection. Thank you that we see Jesus crowned with glory and honor, all things under his feet. Thank you that you raised him again from the dead, that our Savior is living and that he is coming and that we will be raised with him when he comes again. We look forward to that day and we say in our hearts, come quickly, Lord Jesus, bring your people home. Let the afflicted and the poor and the needy who hope in you see the outcome of their faith in sight as you rule and reign over all the nations and bring us into your eternal heavenly kingdom. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, back to Genesis tomorrow. Day 51 will take us back to Genesis 33. Have a blessed day in the Lord.